What's up folks, I'm Mitch Smith and I'm going to be helping you learn Lincoln Brewster's The Power of Your Name today. We are playing that this week at church and I thought that it would be a good opportunity to get a little extra practice in and help you guys out too. Now Lincoln Brewster is a top notch guitar player. I cannot uh, even begin to, to compare myself to, to him, but I can do what I can do on this. Now he is in F sharp minor and the only ways that I can fathom to get to that are to either capo the second fret because he's using a lot of open strings so we can capo the second fret uh, if you are on some newer technology you may be able to electronically raise the pitch of your instrument a whole step or you can actually tune your guitar a whole step up which I am not a fan of. I don't like the idea of putting that much tension on my neck. And we are going to be playing this a whole step low just because Lincoln Brewster's voice is in such a high register for a male singer. Um, it doesn't hurt to drop the song a whole step because uh, instrumentally if we if we capo it's fine. You can okay but that that capo it actually does affect the sound a little bit and this is such a guitar driven song and such a beautiful intro I hate to diminish the sound of the guitar in any way so cleaner that sounds so I'm going to teach it to you in the open position because that's where I'm playing it and I don't want to throw myself off too bad but once you learn the idea of it and get the the main parts of it you can you can raise it up a, a whole step or you can raise it two whole steps for that matter so um, let's just start with uh, we're in the key of E minor and the chords we're going to have are C and D. Okay, an E minor. Imagine an E minor bar chord here. Okay. Now we're only going to be using a couple of notes out of there. So we have all these notes. Those are the two notes I need. Now it's this one this one that is the fifth of the scale and then the ninth or the second or I'm sorry the uh, that'd be the third that'd be the third all right so we have the root note with this open E we have the fifth here and the third here all right so that gives us a true E minor chord so we're going to slide into that. Make sure you slide with this second finger. Oh, and by the way, I'm playing with my fingers. That's really necessary for this song. Okay. Now our next chord is C. Now we have this C, but uh, it's going to be much better if we imagine a bar chord C here. Okay, that's all three of these notes barred. C being the root here. We don't need that root note. We're just going to play these two notes. That's the uh, second string and fourth string. Okay, so those are the same, same two strings we're playing through most of this riff. So. bring that up a whole step you'll have a D okay if 
if I just plucked those two notes in my D chord, that's what I have here. I would recommend using your second and third finger though, because that lets the second finger kind of lead the way. If you think about the shape of the chord progression, you have E, C, D. Okay? Even though that's the fifth of the chord, here would be the roots. E, C, D. But I'm doing the fifth like it's a power chord. adding the third of each chord on the top with that uh, third finger, first finger in this case. Okay, so here we go. Now, we have this note. Alright, so that is going to be part of, if we imagine our, our open C chord here and just raise it up a whole step, then that brings us to a D. Now it's not a true D major because we have a couple of open strings that don't truly belong to a, a natural D major chord. But they're beautiful. So we're going to keep those. And that brings us to those two notes. Drop all the way down, second string open this time, and fourth string, second fret. Now, those two notes are right out of this E minor chord. Okay? So we started with the E minor bar chord up here, went to C, or I'm sorry, C, D, D, C, E minor. Let's listen to that again. Okay. Now the second time to that. We're going to end on this E. Alright. And what I got there, I'm allowing this string, six, I'm allowing the sixth string to ring. I have my third of the chord here, that's a G, so that's the third of an E minor chord. I have the fifth of the chord here. I'm sorry, I have the root again here, and the fifth of it here. So that's like a little power chord on this E. Okay? So, So put the two together. And that being the fifth, putting the fifth of the chord on top, leaves it a little unfinished. So that's kind of good because we're coming into a really cool part here. Now what I'm going to do is imagine a C and a D chord here. Alright, and look at the notes thereof. We're going to leave the root note out on these, the, the bassy root note. So if you imagine that fourth string open, and we're just going to hammer to the second and to the fourth fret all in one swift motion. Okay? catch the third string open and, and again this is how I play this okay Lincoln Brewster does some really beautiful things there I'm doing the best I can with it and if you take this you might be able to add or take from it as you see fit to, to make it work at your skill level so okay slide from this partial C chord to that partial D suspended 4. Okay. Now I just take that bass and walk it down 
E, D, C, B. Catch that pinky note right there. So I'm, what I've really got there is a G major. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to do something really similar to that, but I'm going to end on a D this time. So... Try to put the A in the bass. Let's see how that sounds. I don't know about that. I like that. Just jump straight to it from the C. So we put both of those together. Then do your opening thing again. All right. Now I'm not using a delay right now. I usually use a delay, but this uh, this riff is so rebuttal, if you will. You, it, it's you need to play it with feeling, and if you have delay on, that sets a tempo. And uh, you may not want to strictly stick to that tempo until the end, because what's going to happen is at the end, when we do that last... Okay, the piano is going to come in with the, with the chord. I'm going to need that tempo because that's what's going to set the pace of the song. That's what, if I turn my delay on throughout the song, that's the speed I've got it set to. Which the song is, um, I don't have a beats per minute, but let me see if I've got a milliseconds on here that I've set. I've just used my tap tempo, but let's see what the milliseconds are. So it looks like I've got around 800, give or take some, 800 milliseconds. It's kind of hard to get a dead on accurate milliseconds when you're just using your tap tempo. So, uh, I mean, I could get into my software, actually line a click up to it and uh, let it play long term and see how it lines up. But this is going to hold us in there tight enough. So let's just try that. I'm going to do that last riff. Uh, and then try to turn my delay on in enough time to where it establishes a tempo. So we have, um, not that. so we can have some open string activity. So I'm sorry, that's a that's a B. Let's do E right here. Okay. Now the reason I need that pinky is because I'm gonna hammer that on really fast and I can't get that same hammer going from E here to G there. I need it from E here to G there. 
then I can use a hammer. Okay, but that first one I need to hammer to this G. Okay. Okay. So when uh, the keyboard players. sync on into the song. Now that's the chord progression to the uh, the the verse. It's E minor, C, D. So once the the uh, groove is established and we have that beats in, drums and bass, we have a progression like this. We're going to incorporate that first string open. First string comes in. Okay, and then as we're just going to kind of stick with those. So, surely children were made for the streets, and fathers were not made to live. Surely this isn't how it should be. Let your kingdom come. Nice little Lincoln Brewster lick right there. Okay, then he does another verse. Surely nations were not made for war, or the broken meant to be ignored. Surely this just can't be what you saw. Let your kingdom come. Coming into the chorus, we're going to go G major, D, C. That's a C. So what I'm doing is, I probably should go ahead and make a C, but I'm really concentrating on my first three strings. Because we have a rhythm player, we have a bassist, and we have singers. There's a lot going on on that stage. So the more notes you hit, the more likely you're going to get a muddy sound. So I'm going to just concentrate on those high notes. So it's G, D, C, D. So I will live to carry your compassion, to love a world that's broken, to be your hands and feet. And I will give So let's check out some stuff going on there. We have a couple of licks that I really like to always incorporate. Like I said, I am certainly no Lincoln Brewster, but these licks are pretty close and I can do them, so I try to incorporate these as out of respect for the original artist. So we have um, the one is we're going to pull off of the third down to the second. Catch that seventh, fourth slide to the fifth. Okay, so another one. So we have these that we start on. We're going to come up. So that's 
that's both those notes on the uh, tenth fret, then down to the seventh. Okay? And then uh, there's later in there where he goes. Now, you can, you know, pick out that note specifically by ear. That's easy to do. But theoretically, you can guess it because if this is my E, there's my minor third. So if you're playing this, you know, with the capo on two, you're going to want to bring that up because you're going to be in F sharp instead. So it's going to be that note. All right. So that's pretty much how we play it. Of course, there's a bridge. It's just C and D and uh, any part that we have, especially the outro, uh, they just kind of give me free reign to throw some licks in there, so it might be something like... my take on playing Lincoln Brewster's The Power of Your Name. And hopefully in fooling with it you can find some more neat little things that either Lincoln Brewster's doing or that you just decide you want to put in there for yourself. But do it tastefully. Don't just throw a bunch of junk in it. It's a beautiful song without overdoing it. So um, good luck with that and I will see you next time.